Hey, good morning, everybody. I haven't done a shop walkthrough in quite a while, so I figured I'd take this morning, cruise the shop a little bit and show you what's going on. Um, a lot of things have changed uh, their state a lot over the last couple weeks. So I figured I'd clue you in on where we're at on some of them. This is Old Yeller. This is that ochre and white truck that was a long bed that we had cut down and patina matched. We got its rolling chassis all together and uh, probably later towards the end of next week, we're gonna get its body on. And uh, I've already pre-wired that cab. Um, so a lot of that stuff's already been done that we would need to do at this point. So really it's gonna get put together, get the exhaust built, a fuel filler, and there's not a lot of work done left to be done on this truck. So I think that come spring, this thing will be done no problem at all. Uh, some cool stuff to look at is, um, so this is our standard. It's a uh, No Limit Engineering ProTech raised rail drop spindle chassis. So this is the one that can set lower like we like. Um, some of the upgrades, upgrades, upgrades that are pretty common with us are doing all Delrin bushings. Um, we, we metal finish the, the, the chassis after we mock them up and then we send them to our local powder coat guy. This one's got a, the smaller of the spline bars. Um, which is totally awesome for a street cruiser truck that might do some track days every now and then. This is a, an LS3. We buy these new from GM. This is the 430 horse long block. And then we uh, pull the heads. We send them to Frankenstein. Frankenstein does a CNC porting on the heads. And then we put a Brian Tooley cam package in them with all the valve springs and upgrades that it needs to have. This one was Cerakoted. We did a high ram intake manifold on it because it just looks awesome. Um, and then we patina painted inside our logo to match the truck. Um, it's got the uh, ultimate headers. These are the little long tube that's made for the no limit chassis. Uh, these are Ensign 7 8 and a mill or what you'd be uh, referred to as a, a raw finish. T56 Magnum behind it. That's the close ratio trans. It's got a McLeod uh, or McLeod, however you want to say it, RST twin disc, a nine inch. Um, this one's a floater. Um, we do the Detroit Speed floater kits. We've got our battery on it. Um, this is just the standard no limit tank that we powder coated. Truck's got a hitch on it, which is kind of cool. Um, Matt's got a couple vintage 911s that he um, does little track days every now and then with, so he's got a single axle aluminum trailer to pull behind this truck, which will be pretty cool. Tim's square body. Um, it's been over here for a few weeks now. I've been doing all the wiring and uh, a lot of the interior stuff. Right now I'm finishing the under dash harness for Tim's square body truck. So we like to make all the dash harnesses removable. So if the truck's ever gotta be taken apart, or pull a cab or anything. Everything's modular. So the entire dash harness is in the truck and can be pulled out. The engine harness. The engine harness connects to these three connectors. These connectors are the vintage air. These are gonna go through the door. This is a, a connector go here for the power windows and power door locks. But yeah, everything can unplug um, and have its own little sub harnesses. So this is the under dash. And then as soon as I get this all terminated, limbed up, then I'm gonna do inside the doors, uh, make those sub harnesses for the windows and locks. And then I can put the engine harness on and then make the chassis harness that goes back to the tail lights and fuel pumps. So that's what I'm doing. It's overwhelming to some people, but I love it. <laughs> I'll let you peek inside this truck. <clears throat> but what I've been working on is, um, I've got all the stereo stuff and the, uh, the ECU um, for the engine in. Um, so I've kind of got all the, the wiring routed to the, the component sets and uh, the kick panels are taken out right now, but we've got a, a full call um, five and a quarter component set that goes in each kick panel and then behind the seats. Um, we've got an Alpine five channel amp and there's a single 10 inch speaker that sits behind the seat. I'll show you the radio. I really like these radios. So what we do is we, find a good original radio and then we've got a guy that we send him to out in California and he uh, like refurbishes the original bezels and stuff and uh, makes everything the ribbon control work inside but they've got a brand new amplifier inside so only the case is original um, so now it does AM FM it does Bluetooth and I got an auxiliary input cable that I'll run up and put inside the console um, so those are really really cool I've got uh, 
A lot of the wiring done, um, had to take the door off so that I could uh, build all the interior door harnesses. So this truck has power windows and power locks. Um, so I built those interior door harnesses and then um, they come through the factory grommet and uh, I've got two Deutsch connectors here that can handle all that stuff. So if you need to pull the door again, you just come in here, pop these connectors loose, push the grommet through, the connectors will go through, take these two hex bolts out instead of the factory rivets and this can all come out with the door. So a lot of, a lot of forethought goes into and how I wire these. Um, same with the every connector, like this is all the gauge wiring. Um, so we've got a big mount in here that's removable from the truck that's got all the Dakota Digital stuff mounted to it. So if any hit module ever went out, you could just pull that and unplug the two connectors and pull that entire mount out. So you're not trying to undo individual wires inside the truck and pull something out. So anyways, this one's going really good. Um, once it's wired up, um, Dylan's going to start helping me put all the lighting and trim and interior door panels on, a lot of that stuff. And then uh, we can literally drive it um, over to the other shop and we'll uh, build the exhaust. And then it's going to upholstery. So we're going to try to get this one done and take it to C10 Nationals in Texas in May. So hope to see you guys there with that truck. This is Jimmy's Blazer. A lot of you guys have commented on social media about how cool this one is and it is awesome. Um, this is the new Ford Area 51 Blue. It's a really cool color. Um, had to kind of twist Jimmy's arm a little bit to get him to paint this color, but it is very cool. Um, got the Bose wheels on it. They're uh, 1912 and 1910 and a half or something like that. And then the, all the interior has been Raptor lined in the same body color. But uh, starting to put a lot of this truck back together. We had already built all the exhaust for this truck. Um, a lot of that, well, all the fabrication stuff's done. So it's just down to me finishing up the wiring and getting a lot of the components reinstalled in the dash. Um, kind of at last minute, we decided to change the valve covers. And so I'm gonna remote mount the coils and get the engine harness installed. Um, we've still yet to put the fiber forged inner fenders in. And then I'll still have to Cerakote the radiator and core support and stuff like that. But uh, this one's getting really close. We've picked out some cool interior colors for really all three of these vehicles. Um, so we got leather and German square. We've come in for Matt's truck, Tim's truck, and Jimmy's truck. So a lot of upholstery stuff that's going to be going down over the next, I don't know, six months or so. So I'm going to walk to the other shop. A lot going on over here as usual. Um, today I'm in here and I'm going to work on Keith's truck. Um, him and I have been doing kind of a weekend thing where we are trying to make some improvements on his truck. Um, he's gonna do some Optima road course stuff this year. So some of the things that were not as good or not up to the task are being redone or replaced. And uh, this is always fun. Um, I, I enjoy helping friends and seeing them enjoy the sport. And uh, anyways, this is, this is it. Uh, right now him and I are doing the firewall and we're doing the dash. There was a lot of um, issues with the sheet metal, uh, just from years of ownership and years of changing things. So uh, him and I um, cut the old dash out and put a new dash in. That old dash had had a lot of this, you know, factory holes all hacked out of it. So put a whole new dash in it. Um, I'm gonna finish welding that under the windshield today. And then I'm gonna finish uh, all the fabrication of the firewall today too. And then uh, him and I are going to start body working and prepping it for to paint the firewall on the dash. That's old yeller. It's just sitting over here until the, we can bring the chassis over and set the body back on. A new project that you guys haven't seen on the channel is um, Wes's 70, I think it's a 69 actually, 69 or 70, either one. Uh, also on a No Limit Razor Rail Project chassis. Um, this one's got a really cool Lingenfelter, well, kind of a Lingenfelter built motor. Um, these were actually originally motors um, that a boat manufacturer used to use. They would buy these, um, they had hundreds of them supposedly, and uh, they were all meant to run in the ocean. So they would put really big uh, bricks in the, in the supercharger, you know, so a giant intercooler in there. And then they had a, I don't know how it worked, but they would pump fresh water through them. Um, but anyways, he sourced a bunch of these and has got one of them in this truck. Kind of a unique thing that I've never seen before, but uh, we're gonna do some stuff to this motor, um, 
we're going to Cerakote it, put an accessory drive on it. Um, this week, uh, the guys in the shop have put the uh, fiber forged inner fenders in the truck and they got the cooling package installed in the core support. Um, so these are the gel coat carbon. So these are a carbon fiber inner tub. They're huge, like you can see, uh, and they can fit a 12 inch wide wheel, a 335, and the trucks sit really low. So these are the most roomy inner fenders that, that we can find and we are a dealer for them and sell quite a few of these actually. Uh, but anyways, like, like I said, they got the cooling package in and they're gonna start building this week the uh, overflow tank for the radiator, the water tank for the supercharger, um, mounting the supercharger water pump, all that stuff. But uh, this was also a long bed truck that uh, Street Machinery up in Ohio cut down and then they did the patina matching on this truck. Um, ordered some really cool wheels for this truck this week. Um, excited to see this truck together um, and kind of keep progressing over the next few months, but it's a really fun one as well. The OBS truck, you guys have seen it in here now for a few months, and this week, uh, we're gonna get it all the way torn down so it can go to powder coat. They've been working at finishing the exhaust system. Um, the exhaust system's kind of unique because um, of the uh, X member that we built and then like where we've located certain components in the back. But uh, when we're done with the exhaust, I'll show you how that ended up. And then uh, the fun stuff that I like is the clean work, the final assembly and wiring and all that stuff that I nerd out about, like y'all know. But anyways, this is uh, kind of the updates on where we're at in the shop. Hope you guys have a good weekend. See you later.